What's going on YouTube? Today we're taking a look at the classic Hinderer Knives uh, XM24. Now, unless you're not familiar with Hinderer Knives, you've probably been living under a rock. These are super, super popular, um, and this particular one is their big daddy. Uh, it's been around for a little while. It's uh, available in a couple different uh, kind of stone washes, colors, textures, etc. And uh, the one we are looking at today, uh, da -da -da, if I can get that to focus, XM24 4 inch Bowie Triway Battle Black Red G10. So each one of those kind of means uh, something different. But uh, let's kind of go through that. So, uh, first and foremost, the uh, XM24 is the model, 24 being, I don't even know what that stands for, but uh, 24. Um, they obviously have the 18, uh, which is kind of their super popular XM18, 3, 3.5, three etc. 3 being the blade length, 3.5 being the blade length, uh, this being the XM24 4.0. Uh, Bowie is the actual blade. This is obviously a Bowie. Uh, blade, they make it in a number of different versions, if, uh, if it's a Spanto, if it's a Slicer, etc. So it's a Bowie. Uh, Triway is the pivot system on it, and you'll see that down on the bottom of the tab here. Uh, so that is Triway, meaning Teflon, uh, Phosphor Bronze, and Bearings. This particular one right now has Bearings already pre-installed. And then Battle Black, talking about the uh, the wash on the blade. This is a black uh, blade, which looks great. Uh, really, really good. Kind of black, dark stone wash, which is unique. Don't see too many of them around there. Um, and then uh, red G10 just being the handle, G10 being the plastic material. Uh, you can get scales for these as well if you, uh, you know, if you want to kind of change the color, or if you want to go titanium, carbon etc. So that is that. Now let's kind of take a look at the actual knife itself uh, and do some measurements and some comparisons here. So let's do that first. And uh, just looking at this image, it looks like the ang the image or the knife is kind of angled to the left. It's not. It's just it's such a like a level like with the pocket clip that would be kind of sitting level. That's how it should look, but it's just leaning down, so I apologize about that. So, they say it's four inches, and uh, sharpened, we're not four inches, we're actually at uh, three and five, eight, eh, maybe three and three quarter, right in that conversation. Overall, though, yeah, you can see it being four inches to underneath the thumb stud, and uh, it's a big boy, nine and three eighths, or nine and a quarter, right around there, overall length, which is a nice... It's a nice knife, nice solid, solid size. Um, comparisons uh, in the Hinder line, we're gonna show you, let's show you a couple here. So the Eclipse, this is a super popular kind of replacement of the XM18 three and a half, or I should say replacement, it's the newer version of it. They're still making the XM18 three and a half, super common. And then the Jurassic Slicer. So here's kind of the, the three that are in my current collection that I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of. And uh, they all feel very similar in hand. They all have that hinder kind of feel to them, which is, uh, which is awesome. Like when you hold a hinder, you kind of know right away what you're dealing with. And uh, the only thing is once you put a tie scale on it, like I did on this one, uh, and I'll do a video on this knife at some point here, and I don't think I have already. But once you go full tie, it's really tough going back. I warn you, and I warn your bank. Um, on this guy, though, this is what this is that the show is about. Is this XM24 Bowie? So this guy, I believe, is 20 CV. I don't know if they've done this in a Magna Cut yet, or if they're planning on that. But I can only imagine that's uh, you know, I assume it's coming. Um, this guy is screaming sharp. Now Hinderer, they're not known to have the sharpest factory blades on them, but like, yeah, it's got some, it's a real sharp blade. The pivot system on this is, like I said, the triway. 
And uh, the beauty of that is that you can kind of run Foster Bronze, you can run Teflon or uh, Bearings. Uh, the other nice thing is when they ship these into Canada, they, they run them on Teflon and they crank this pivot down, the hardware down, so that there's no issues with any, uh, anything getting through border security, which is nice. Um, on the pivot though, like <laughs> these things fire out. Action's amazing. These are workman's knives. They're durable. You know, they're touted as military blades, really. Kind of like a strider would be. Um, it's, it's an absolute beast of a knife. It's big. And I, I don't know if this would be my everyday carry. I don't know if I could pull it off, but um, some people do. A lot of people do. And a lot of people like it. Uh, super easy to work on as well. Um, I actually have a dedicated hinderer penny here, uh, which I've marred up. And uh, what I've used this guy for is uh, to take it apart. So the key thing is you can get a hinderer tool, but this is titanium hardware. And titanium is really hard. Okay, So if you don't want to damage that, and the, the hinderer tool is titanium, so tie on tie is not good. And uh, you just don't want to damage it. So you get a softer material, you could use a credit card, kind of fold it over on itself, or for me, use a penny. Works just fine, fits nicely, you can get in there, take it apart, and it will not leave a single mark. Uh, so that's kind of how I've done the bearing change. On the actual uh, rest of the knife here, on the ergonomics, um, let's get this guy in hand. So it feels like a Rick Hander. It fits really well. Uh, you've got some real nice thick jimping up here that runs uh, for the majority of the top of the handle, which is nice. Hopefully you guys can see that. Real, real nice jimping. Makes a lot of sense. Um, you can choke up onto the blade. It is, uh, it is kind of recessed down for that bowie, which looks nice. Feels nice. I don't know how useful that's going to be. You're, you're choking up big. I've got an XL hand and I've got to really move my hand forward to utilize that space. You've got the customization points in that you can make this knife your own by changing out a couple little things here. Um, this little hardware there you can pull out and put some stuff in. As well, is there another one of those on the back here? If you want to change the clip, you know, you can change that, modify it. Uh, you can run this guy top up or bottom up on the actual carry which is kind of the whole point here and the customization point that we're talking about is you can flip the clip around it either way i prefer it this way which i've done i believe they come factory in that position as well um, they do have a dedicated over travel stop you can see underneath that pocket clip so this is not going anywhere which is awesome we've got a different material for the lock bar insert. And remember, the, uh, the lock bar insert isn't just to uh, prolong longevity on the wearing parts of the knife, but it's also to, uh, remember, titanium frames and steel blades don't necessarily mash very well when it comes to uh, grinding on one another. So when you, when you change that metal material there, you're able to optimize that transition point, and so they don't stick, right? Um, I know I've seen some knives that, uh, you know, it just they don't put a lock bar insert there and it just doesn't work as well as it should. Right? Um, I'll just cut into the top of the board there. Um, when you're firing this guy out, you know, you're looking at this flipper tab for a lot of its, uh, um, for the jimping we talked about. I'm kind of wondering why they put jimping on the top part here. Um, just looking at this now, and I think all the hinders are like that, other than the Jurassic doesn't have any, I don't think. Yeah, it's smooth for looking at the Jurassic here. So I don't know why they do that. And the Eclipse, same thing. They've uh, put a bunch of jimping on there. So I, I'm assuming it's like, hey, this is where you want to fire it. But if you look at the, the physics of this, you can't really fire it from there, right? You're pulling back and pushing it out, right? So, uh, unless that's just for wear on the ground, on the, on the surface, then maybe that's what they're going for, but it's not really usable when we're talking a flipper, uh, which is fine. Um, all the hardware is Torx, 
and um, which is nice. It actually screws into the hardware adjacent to it on the other side versus going right into the frame, which uh, has been a known issue on some models where you can strip that out, not necessarily hinder. The uh, spacers on the back here, you can certainly change and modify and customize as well. There's like a whole industry segment of people that want to do that, which is cool, just to make it your own. You've got some matching jimping on the back here where you can hang your lanyard. Lanyard's a pretty far back position, you know, I don't know why they do that. Oh, I actually know exactly why they do that because it's a Bowie and there's no blade that's sitting there. So may as well put it there. And on the tip, you're not really going to have room for it. If you look, there's, uh, there's just enough room to tuck that blade in there without a cover. So you're not going to get your finger caught on it, but I can feel it grabbing my, uh, grabbing my finger there. Just a hair. Blades obviously dead center. It's, it's a Rick Hinner knife. Um, QC's typically on Hinder pretty good. They do pump a lot of volume out. And, uh, you know, you do get some stories on Reddit. You do get some stories on some of the forums where guys are saying certain things. Um, my experience with them is it's been great. Um, all three of these I got new, out of the box, and not a single issue. So, um, take that with what you want. But, um, you know, there's going to be people in the one to five percentage range that uh, do have issues and it's not so much that the the issues exist you know these are not necessarily all machine made knives there's some human error involved and uh, to me it's how the company handles it more than the error that's produced so if there was an error on this and i emailed the company and said here's the error that i'm having you know my expectations they take care of it and uh, move along and from what i read online you know hinder's got a good reputation for that so don't have any concerns on my end. Um, these are hard use knives. Uh, some of the hardest use knives that I own uh, that I go, you know what, if I got into hunting and was backpacking and wanted an outdoor knife that I'm not worried about, this would be the one that I would take with me. It is absolutely a beast. Absolutely a, a beast. Some cool shaping on the blade as well. If we look down, it's flat on top with a little switch which looks nice and cool. That black stone wash looks amazing as well. Uh, it's a beautiful knife. Absolutely beautiful. We've got some additional cuts into the G10 here to just kind of fit those ergonomics nice and smooth. Not a whole lot of sharp points as well. It's just a well-produced, well-thought-out design. This guy's now several years old, so it's not like it's a new model or anything, but uh, you know, they're doing a good job making this one. Uh, the pivots, or the pins in here, I'm thinking, just looking down that, are we looking at different sized pins uh, by knife? We might be. The stop pin, it's up at the top there. So that's interesting, I never noticed this. Unless I'm blind. You know what, I could be blind. So you look at how um, Hinder does the stop pin here, right? So on the Eclipse, for reference, you know, the blade opens and pivots to the, st the top of the stop pin here. Um, this guy doesn't do that. This guy pivots open and pushes against the top of the blade, or the top of the frame. I wonder if that's I don't know they do that, or if that's just a new design. Um, no, the Jurassic's the same way, also a newer knife. I'd, you know what, I'd have to compare it with like an XM18 to see, because you know that's going to be the bigger version, or the smaller version of this, which is the bigger version. But uh, the pins themselves, they look bigger, which is awesome. Great sound on deploy. Just, a, just an awesome feeling quality knife, honestly, like... For what they're doing for $425 on this, or, or actually this one's a little more, I think it might be $550, $600. Bucks. Uh, and then if you want to throw a tie scale on it, you're, you're getting up there. But for the kind of quality they're producing at this price point, honestly, they're doing a hell of a job. It's such a competitive price point. And we're not talking like, you know what, if you said to him, hey, I want you to sell this design, but I want you to sell it at $1,500, bucks, could you make it any better? The answer would be yes. He'd absolutely make it better. 
and there'd be more detail and there'd be less problems out of the box, I imagine. But you know, you're in that five, 550 range and it is so full of competitors and especially being made in America. You know what, like you're, this guy's margins cannot be huge to produce something that smooth, that repeatable, great design, you know, like, uh, you know, customizable, like honestly, like Hinder, I can see why they've got like a cult-like following. These blades are worth, um, they've got really good resale, just like a lot of the Chris Reeves, um, so the Shirogorovs. You know, these are these are carryable GICs in a lot of way, hard use, uh, like Striders. Um, you can carry these and not worry about it and buy it, use it for a few years and you'll probably get with price increases, damn near what you paid. <laughs> As long as you keep it in good shape, they're made to they're made to have for a while. Absolutely beautiful knife. Um, absolutely beautiful knife. Uh, some of the uh, so we talked about the lock bar insert. I just like the the design aspect that when you walk down on the lock, you know the material, the workmanship, it's all very similar. Like the pattern is similar. Uh, and the square notchiness it falls through to the lock bar. Now the lock bar is not protruding either. I know some knives, they like to push that out and kind of raise the, the lock bar up, but they don't do that on this. They just kind of cut a nice little notch into the side of it for ergonomics, which is nice because you're not left searching for it. Now you can hear, you can feel there's a dead space for the detent. I mean, I don't know if there's a ramp there or what. I'm assuming that's what we're dealing with. To engage that but it's nice you can drop it into your finger and then look at that remember I like Shiro Goroths that's I'll, I'll admit I'm a Shiro whore and like look at this it's pretty damn good it's up there if we can get some sounds and then what I'll do here is I'll put it on its back and if you guys want to see the the action on this unfettered, you can kind of see like it, it holds itself up. And this is the whole point here, guys. Like you want it to hold itself up. You don't want it to fall down, right? And this one's not worn in at all, but controlled, nice, nice detent, holding it in place as well. Just uh, solid. Of course you can jiggle it down and get it to close without issue, but you don't want it to be a guillotine. You don't want it falling on your finger. These blades are sharp. You know, one thing I will say though is like an XM24, people think, oh, four inch blade, big beastly knife. It's not as big and beastly as you'd think. They do a really good job of fitting that blade in there. I just wanted to show you that nice little horse head on the top. Looks real nice. Some more detail on the blade. Without cutting myself, hopefully. See how close I can get in with the camera before it freaks out. So, yeah. A lot of people like these knives, man. Myself included. So, wanted to do a quick video on that. I talked about the ergonomics. Uh, I talked about the blade, the Bowie, the, the black finish, the hardware. The backspacer options, you can customize that. We talked about the pocket clip. I like the pocket clip, it's simple. Um, could it be more of a machine, super cool clip? Of course, but then you're gonna be into a different $100 up price point, I imagine. And then now we're not talking, now we're talking about a knife that, uh, you know, is another 100, 200 bucks and that has plastic scales on it. And uh, all of a sudden it'll be a different conversation. So, you know, once again, if you want an aftermarket one, get one. Um, what else? The ergonomics on this is kind of confusing. I'm not a big fan of that, but uh, you know what? If you're going to light switch it, you're not going to have any issues. Um, you know, there's a reason they make it that way. It does stick up a little bit, the pocket pecker, but if you look at the curve of the actual handle, and if you follow it around, it kind of encapsulates that if it were to be a, a box. So yes, it sticks up, but it's almost countersunk in a way. Um, I think that might be it. So I think that is where I'm going to end this one. Appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out the Hinder XM24. 
And uh, you know what, if you have any questions, leave them below. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, especially early on in the channel's life, which is right now. Um, anything helps, and uh, every single comment I'll leave, uh, reply to you guys. So appreciate you, thanks for stopping by, and uh, until next time, we'll catch you around. Cheers, guys.